all comes back to context, my friends. You've probably heard me say this a million times, but context matters. <laughs> Hey, sterile pressing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. In today's video, whew, it's been a long time coming, but it is time for sterile processing myth busting number four. I've been working on so much great content that you all have been requesting. And I want to thank you for that and keep those requests coming. Put them in the comments down below so I can make those videos that you want to see. But in today's videos, we're going to tackle that big problem in the industry, which is misinformation. And we're going to tackle it right here, right now. So without further ado, let's get into it, my friends. Myth busting number one. If Amy says that you should do something, then you have to do it. Not quite. The word should in the English language is one of those judgmental words that causes a lot of confusion and problems. And that's even more so in the field of sterile processing. Like we feel like we should be working out or we feel like we should be smarter or we should be running this type of test in sterile processing. All we're doing is shooting all over ourselves. But when it comes right down to it, especially in the Amy text, the word should is not an end all be all word. Amy defines the word should in the text, Amy ST 79 2017 states it like this. Should indicates that among several possibilities, one is recommended as particularly suitable without mentioning or excluding others, or that a certain course of action is preferred, but not necessarily required. Did you hear that? Preferred, but not necessarily required. It all comes back to context, my friends. You've probably heard me say this a million times, but context matters. Now let's look at the use of the word should in the Amy text. So here in chapter 4.2.2 under sterile processing personnel section D, Amy says this, all personnel performing sterile processing activities should be certified within two years of employment should be certified. Well, we already know that isn't true. It's different from state to state, whether certification is a legal requirement or if it's even in any of the laws whatsoever. And it also depends on all the individual facilities, depending on their ability to hire sterile processing techs. If they just make it mandatory, then they might not be able to hire anybody. So they have to have exclusions, like maybe um, get the certification within one year, get certified within two years. So the whole should in the Amy is just a reference to try to get you to move towards that, but it is not a requirement. So should does not mean you have to. Myth number two, peel packs have to be placed above wrapped items in a sterilization load. If you haven't watched my video about proper sterilization configuration, you should go back and watch that. This is wrong. Amy ST79 2017 even has an illustration to show you proper sterilization configurations. This can be found on page 62 if you're curious. When it comes to which items go above and below other items, the only thing that matters is rigid containers. Rigid containers always go at the bottom underneath everything else. So peel packs cannot go under rigid containers, but they actually can go underneath wrapped items. Myth number three, if we run out of TOSI tests, we cannot run the washer disinfectors. Though I believe TOSI tests or whatever tests you use to test your washer disinfectors are important, they are not the end all be all. Going back to myth number one of this video, Amy says you should use these. They say you should be testing your washer disinfectors, but it also lists three strategies to ensure your instruments are being properly washed. You can directly test instruments after they've been through a cycle with something like ATP testing. You can use an in-washer test, something like the TOSI. 
and even just monitoring the critical parameters of the cycle. So if a washer disinfector is unable to reach like say temperature, or maybe it doesn't do the proper dosing of detergent or enzyme, the majority of the time that cycle is going to abort. So I would recommend this. If TOSIs are part of your process, which they should be, if they are part of your process, then you need to write something in your policy as a backup plan when TOSIs become unavailable. And this could be something like text will monitor the critical parameters of the cycle to ensure it was completed or something like that. TOSIs are great, but logistically you cannot always just assume that they're going to be available. Myth number four, wrapped trays can be stacked as long as we use tray liners. I've heard this and I've seen this before and it is still wrong, probably. And I say probably because context matters, we need to understand the type of wrap used and the weight of the instruments themselves before we can actually say whether that's good or bad. Some people get confused thinking that stacking of trays has everything to do with the feet under the trays and those feet digging into the trays below them. That is a concern, but that is not the primary problem. Even if you're following proper weight limits, feet can be a problem digging through the wrap. The fact is this, the wrap is designated to a specific weight because over that specific weight, it can damage the integrity of the entire wrap itself. Even if your trays have hard plastic liners that give a really smooth touch to the top of the tray beneath and isn't creating any specific pressure points, the entire weight itself is what is compromising the entire wraps underneath it. As you stack trays, the wrap on the very bottom is taking the brunt of all the weight above it. Not to mention you're adding the weight of the liners themselves. Now, will stacking trays cause damage if it's overweight? Maybe, maybe not, but that's not the point. The point is the manufacturer set a weight limit and according to joint commission, you either follow it or you get cited on it. It's that simple. And lastly, myth number five. Now that we have pre-assembled biological process challenge devices, it is no longer acceptable to create your own 16 towel biological. Sorry to burst some bubbles, but that is not true. Just like we talked about with the TOSI test, logistics and supply could always be an issue. Though Amy says that we should use the pre-assembled ones, it also says that the 16 tell method is a backup. You can find that on page 94 of Amy ST79 2017. And that, my friends, is myth busting number four. Hopefully we don't go a long period of time until we get to number five. Any topics or videos you want to see, please put those in the comments down below. I'll be sure to read those and to put those in my, my list of videos to make. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.